children, welcome to a new week as we look at the life of Moses, the Israelites and their relationship with God. I hope you have your Bibles and your notebooks ready. Let's say a word of prayer. Dear Lord, your children are gathered here today to listen to your word. We pray that we'll be reminded of it daily and we'll use it in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray thanksgiving. Amen. We will begin our time today with a memory verse, followed by song time, and the lesson by Auntie Afi. Our memory verse for today can be found in John chapter 17, verse 17 b. John is the fourth book of the New Testament. John chapter 17, verse 17 b. Your word is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17 b. Amen. From our memory verse, the phrase, your word, refers to the Bible, which is God's word. How many books are in the Bible and how many parts? Correct. We have two parts in the Bible, the New Testament and the Old Testament, and it has 66 books. When the Bible says truth, it means it is real, it is a fact, and it's believable. So the memory verse today tells us that the word of God is true and has no lies in it. So now let's repeat our memory verse. Say after me. John chapter 17 verse 17 b. Your word is truth. John chapter 17 verse 17 b. Amen. Again. John chapter 17 verse 17 b. Your word is truth. John chapter 17 verse 17 b. Amen. Now we'll have a song time followed by the lesson given by Auntie Afi. Wanna hear his word every day God speaks, we listen Read the Bible, trust and obey God speaks, we listen Wanna hear his word every day God speaks, we listen Read the Bible, trust and obey No better way to truly Wanna hear his word every day God speaks, we listen Read the Bible, trust and obey No better way to truly know God No better way to truly know us No better way to truly know life Cause in the Bible we meet Jesus Listen, wanna hear his word every day. God speaks, we listen. Read the Bible, trust and obey. Read the Bible every day. Read the Bible, trust and obey. Hello, children, and a very warm and joyful welcome from Song Time to you and you, and you. From our memory verse, we learned that God's word is truth. I hope you have been reading your Bibles regularly and praying. I have, and God has been speaking to me. Today, we will learn from our Bible lesson that God has spoken, and he still speaks today, speaking to us from his word the Bible. I have a lot to tell you today, but before I do that, I hope that you have your Bible, your notebook, your pen or pencil to write down any lessons that God may be teaching you. And then 
we will start. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us through your word, the Bible. Please help us to obey you in Jesus' name. Amen. Over the last few weeks, we watched the touching and encouraging story of Prince Kabu, Samuel Morris, who told many people about how God saved him. And then we watched the story of Joseph, who God used to save his family when there was famine in the land where his father lived. Because he was in Egypt where there was plenty food, God used him to bring Jacob, his father, and his brothers and their children to Egypt because there was a lot of food there. But after many years, the people of Israel became slaves to the Egyptians. They were made to do hard work and they cried out to God to save them. So God sent Moses to go and deliver his people from bondage in Egypt to the promised land. Freedom! from slavery, but they had to travel through the desert to the promised land. But what would they eat? And how would they find water to drink? Children, God provided everything they needed while they traveled the desert. One time, they came to a place called Rephidim, and they were thirsty because there was no water. Then the people went to Moses and they were complaining. Hey, you Moses, did you bring us into the desert to come and kill us here? Children, complaining is sin. Sin is anything that we do or say or even think about that does not please God. Do you know what Moses did? Moses went to God and asked God what he should do. God told him, to go to a rock called Horeb, stand by the rock and strike the rock with his rod. Moses obeyed what God told him. He went to the rock, he struck the rock with his rod and there was plenty of water for everyone to drink. Children, imagine about one million or two million people having enough water to drink. That must have been a lot of water and God provided it for them. While they traveled in the desert, God did so many miracles for them. At one time, God even parted the Red Sea so that the people of Israel could cross on dry land. Children, God does so many things for us. Have you realized and do you know that every good thing that you have received has come from God? We should thank him. God provides us everything. He is more powerful than any king or queen or even a president. And so we should listen to him when he speaks, right? Yes, we should. As the Israelites traveled through the desert, they came to a valley, the widest part of the valley, just before Mount Sinai. They were waiting for a king to speak to them. This king is more powerful than any other king or president. Do you know who this king is? The Lord God. They were waiting for God to come and speak to them. While they were there, the mountain shook violently. There was loud trumpet sound and the mountain became covered with thick smoke. How do you think the Israelites felt at that time? They were scared. They were very afraid. Children, do you remember how God spoke to Moses when he was looking after his father-in-law's sheep? Let's check from the Bible what God said to him in Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. 
And that's just what God did. It was on Mount Sinai. Children, God's word is truth. While the people of Israel had camped in the valley just before Mount Sinai, Moses had climbed up onto the mountain because God called him. God said to him, tell the people of Israel, you saw what I did to the Egyptians and how I brought you out of the land of Egypt where you were in slavery and I'm taking you to the promised land. Obey me and you will be my people. Moses went down the mountain and told the people what God had said. Moses obeyed and the people responded, we will do all that God has said we should do. So Moses went back up the mountain and he told God what the people said. God told Moses, in three days, I will come down to you in a thick cloud and I will speak to the people. Let's check exactly what God said. Exodus chapter 19, verses 10 and 11. And the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. God told Moses, to set a boundary around the mountain so that no one will cross and try to see him. Moses obeyed God. Today, God speaks to us through his word, the Bible. God may not speak to us in thunder and lightning like he spoke to the Israelites on that day, but God does speak to us through his word. The Bible is the living and eternal word of God. The words are for you. God wants to speak to you and to speak to me through his word, the Bible. While the people waited, they prepared themselves. Are you prepared to hear the word of God? When you hear God's word being read by somebody and you don't understand, will you ask what it means so that it can be explained to you? Children, God wants to speak to us. If you are a Christian, when you read God's word, you will know how he wants you to live daily to please him. If you are not a Christian, through the word of God, you will get to know how you can receive forgiveness of sins and live a new life through his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Isn't it great that someone as mighty and powerful as God would love us so much as to want to speak to us? Children, after three days, Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The mountain shook violently and the sound of the trumpet blew really loud. Now listen to what God had to say to his people. We can find it in Exodus chapter 20. God's word is truth. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. God had spoken and the people had heard his law. Do you think any of them said, hmm, Today, I will not go and listen to God today. I will wait and I will go tomorrow so that I can hear what God has to say. They would not dare to do that. They were too much afraid. Children, God has spoken to us through his word. All that we have been hearing today has been from the word of God. If you are a Christian, God wants you to obey him. Will you pause and say a prayer and thank God 
for his word, the Bible, and tell him to help you to obey him? If you are not a Christian, will you pause and thank God that through reading the Bible, he will show you why you need a savior and he will show you what savior he has sent, Jesus Christ our Lord, to save us from our sins and to give us a new life? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, the Bible. And we thank you that by reading it, we will know how much you love us and that you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, to forgive us our sins and to give us a new life. Please help us to always read your word and to obey it. In Jesus' name, amen. Children, let's always remember that what we read from the Bible is true. As our memory verse told us in John chapter 17, verse 17 B. Now, I want to challenge you with this. This week, remember to read your Bible and pray every day. I would love to hear from you what God has been saying to you. And I will share with you what God has been saying to me. Until next week, when we come your way again, remember that God's word is truth. And because of that, we will obey it. See you children next week. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Let's continue to remind ourselves of the COVID-19 protocols. Wear a face mask when you step out of the house. And always remember to ensure physical distancing. If you want to use a face shield, add a face mask in for better protection. Using only a face shield is not safe. A face mask should cover your nose, mouth, and chin. Do not make it a mouth or a chin mask. Do not take off your mask if you have to talk with someone. Go ahead and speak through the mask. Whenever you feel unwell, inform your parents, guardians, or an adult close by so that you can seek prompt medical attention. Always wash your hands with soap under clean running water for at least 20 seconds. In the absence of soap and water, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer for your hands. Avoid touching your mouth, your eyes, and your nose. If you have to, please wash your hands properly before you do so. Cough and sneeze into a clean tissue <coughs> and dispose it immediately after using to a closed bin. In the absence of a clean tissue, use your flexed elbow when coughing or sneezing. <coughs> Pray for good health daily and by God's grace, we'll conquer this faceless virus together. For with God, all things are possible.